the equation ordering. Now I'm going to use this example from, uh, from C2 where we have a uh, pressure vessel with a feed and exit stream and we're going to assume that we are working with an ideal gas that we have flow rates through these pipes that are proportional to the pressure difference so here we have an upstream pressure and the flow rate into the pressure vessel is going to be proportional to the difference between the upstream pressure and the vessel pressure and similarly we have atmospheric pressure on this side and the flow rate out of the tank is going to be proportional to the difference between the pressure inside and the atmospheric pressure. Um, there's a pipe over here um, and we'll use the Colebrook equation to calculate the friction factor in that pipe. Right, so uh, we've done some preliminary analysis here of the equations. We can see that we've got the mass balance, the dynamic mass balance over the vessel. We've got the flow rate that I spoke about just two seconds ago. We have the definition of density we are making an assumption here that the Reynolds number uh, for this gas is around uh, is proportional to the density so uh, that's just a simplifying assumption uh, here we have the ideal gas law and here we have the Colebrook equation so notice that we're using a friction factor and a length to calculate the, um, the rate at which the uh, or the proportionality factor of uh, for the output flow rate um, I've already done a little bit of work here by listing all of the symbols that occur in these equations and I'm going to be building what is called an incidence matrix. Now um, it's really easy when you see me go through it, you can make a 1 in this matrix uh, in the column corresponding to a particular symbol if that symbol actually occurs in a particular equation. So we see that it the m dot does occur in equation one. Uh, we see that if i occurs, if o occurs, and that's the only three symbols. In the next equation, we see if i occurs again, along with w, p, u, and p. And now we can simply go carry along with this process. You'll see approximately I've listed the uh, the symbols in the order in which they appear. In the, uh, in the equations. So we can basically go through. So here we see there's a P and a PA. There's a row and an M and a V in this equation. Then we have Reynolds number and the density. We have the pressure, the mass, the gas constant, temperature, the mass and the volume and here we have a friction factor the roughness the diameter of the pipe and Reynolds number now our goal in ordering the uh, the equations is going to be we want to be able to calculate all of the unknowns um, in these various equations now we are, we're primarily concerned with calculating the derivative so that we can calculate uh, so that we can integrate these equations uh, but we want to find an ordering which has the property that all of the uh, unknowns in a particular equation uh, can be calculated from the equations above that equation. So uh, the first obvious reordering that we want to do is to uh, order all the parameters, the known values, so we know that they are going to be known and uh, we can move them to uh, we can move them to the left. So I'm going to move W P A and so on. I'm trying to keep it in the same order just uh, for clarity, so all of these all of these variables uh, would be uh, would be known. We have values for them. Now, um, while I'm doing that, and it's uh, worth mentioning that uh, this is almost the same as introducing additional equations. So these uh, parameters, effectively, there's a, if there's an equation 
saying T is equal to 25 degrees Celsius, M is equal to 24.52, and so on. Right, so there we go. So there you go, W, P, A, V, R, T, M, Epsilon, D, and L. Now we, uh, now we want to address the unknowns. And what we're trying to do is effectively equivalent to substituting equations into one another. So you can see that um, we would be able to substitute Fi into that Fi over there and Fo into that uh, equation over there resulting in uh, elimination of Fi and Fo as uh, unknowns and we, we would uh, be left with dmdt so clearly uh, our dmdt equation should be below those equations right um, also we would need to calculate um, rho and the Reynolds number uh, before we calculate the friction factor and uh, we would need to uh, be able to calculate all of these uh, we would need to be able to calculate the pressure for instance before any of those um, so another one of our one of our calculations here is that our uh, mass in order to calculate um, some of these properties we would actually need to know the mass so so again we're going to move that into our known category and so now all of the all of these all of these variables effectively have to be known in order to um, to do our calculation uh, ooh, also we need to know the upstream pressure Right, so there we have now, and then these are the remaining equations that uh, that we will need. <clears throat> so now we can we can clearly spot that uh, we would be able to calculate um, all of all of the. Uh, we would only have one unknown, this p, uh, in this uh, first equation. Uh, so we can relatively straightforwardly see that we would be able to calculate P given equation 1. At this point all of these all of these variables would be not the next equation we could uh, now calculate Fi. So I'm moving Fi so notice what's happening um, on the left here so I'm, I'm moving variables to the, to the left hand side which is where where these equations uh, are, are known um, and I'm kind of trying to solve for the unknowns on the right hand side okay so the upstream pressure is also known we see that we are able to build out our uh, equation by one uh, to calculate the uh, input flow rate now I would be able in the next equation to calculate the output flow rate uh, if I knew f prime. So I need to move uh, f prime to above that value. Now I can calculate f prime. But I would need to calculate Reynolds before that, so I need to move my density calculation uh, up to above that point, and I need to move these variables across. Right, so once, once we've done this, we realize that we have effectively um, ordered our incidence matrix in such a way so that this top right hand side 
uh, is all zero. So notice this structure, there's this diagonal of ones. And what that means is right at the beginning, in the first case, um, we have all of the all of the inputs known and we calculate p then we have p which means that we have all of these variables known which enables us to calculate fi we now know all of those variables which enables us to calculate rho we have all those variables which enables us to calculate reynolds and so on so this is the final ordering which will allow us to calculate um, from the top down what our uh, what our derivative will be so this is uh, an ordering now this ordering is not unique so there are ways in which we can so for instance we could have um, flipped this uh, row calculation we could have done that before the pressure calculation um, that uh, the, the the set of equations actually admit that because of these zeros that we have here so so it's not a unique um, we, not everybody will come up with exactly the same ordering but any equation ordering which has this upper triangular set of zeros uh, will enable us to calculate all of the unknowns in a stepwise fashion now I've assumed that every equation is in some way manipulable in order to get to a um, answer to in order to solve for one unknown from one equation there's a little bit of a problem with this uh, Colbrook equation because that is uh, not possible to rework into an implicit form but I hope that this has given you some insight into how uh, equation ordering can be used in the uh, equation solving process